We have a mini solar storm, we're going to jump a Starlink train, and two old bright regions are about to join us Earthside. What does all this mean for you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Things are looking up in space weather this week. As we flip to our front side sun, you can see we have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone. It should be sending us some fast solar wind over the next couple days, and it could be bump us up to active conditions at high latitudes and bring us some decent aurora. But down at mid latitudes, well, not quite so much. It may only bring us some disturbances on Earth's night side, which could be an issue for you emergency communicators. But as we flip to our backside sun, that's where things begin to get interesting. Hello regions 27, 40, and 41. They have now rotated into stereo's view as you can see and they are still firing off solar storms. So this means they are still active on the sun's backside and as they rotate into earth view here around the end of this week they could be boosting the solar flux for emergency communications and amateur radio operators and they also could still be launching some solar storms. And that means next week the space weather is going to get pretty interesting. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's just Starlink. No doubt you have already heard the news about the first 60 members in the SpaceX satellite train, which will ultimately be a 12,000 satellite constellation aimed at giving us fast internet coverage all over the world. Since their launch a few days ago, you can see these shiny new low Earth orbiting satellites like little fireflies in space. And they'll be especially visible just after dusk and just before dawn when they will be lit by the sunlight, but your sky overhead will still be dark. But don't expect this shine to last. Expect their brightness to dim slowly as these satellites are now dealing with a hostile space weather environment that will dim their shiny coats over time. And this is just the first of many space weather challenges this budding constellation will face as the sun wakes up and begins firing all sorts of solar storms at Earth. No doubt Starlink will face issues with communications both to the ground and from satellite to satellite as they contend with this new kind of stormy weather. They could even be pushed out of their orbits due to the effects of space weather, so we shall see what the future brings. One thing is for certain, we are witnessing the dawn of a new era in space age communications, and it's fantastic. But it's one in which space weather has now become your weather. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase, with the new moon being on the third. So you night sky watchers, here's the all clear to catch those dim objects in the sky. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from some fast wind from a small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, but we're expecting it to be more sporadic than anything. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled to active conditions with up to about a 35% chance of a minor storm. Now, at mid latitudes, we're expecting more unsettled conditions, but there is a chance of active conditions right around the 31st and even a skosh of a chance of a minor storm. But this probably won't bring Aurora down to mid latitudes. It'll most likely just be disturbances on Earth's night side. So, the emergency communicators just know you might have some issues right around the 31st. But overall, this is pretty much a high latitude phenomenon because these storms are getting pretty weak. And then, as we move into the early part of next week, things are definitely going to quiet back down. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. This is because we do have a spotless sun, at least as far as Earth is concerned, and this should make GPS users very happy because we have no risk for radio blackouts right now on Earth's day side. However, this does mean that the solar flux has dropped back into the 60s. We are in poor radio propagation conditions right now on Earth's day side. However, we do have a little bit of sporadic E, so that should be helping things, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. The good news is that as we get to the end of the week, we will start seeing the influence from the old regions 2740 and 2741 as they begin to rotate back into Earth view, and we could see the solar flux begin to rise and even pop back up into the marginal range for radio propagation. And then next week will be even better. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders just kind of wait it out because next week definitely looks better than 
than this week. Now also because we do have a solar minimum sun, the cosmic ray flux is penetrating more than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose. And this does include you prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely getting interesting. We have a small pocket of fast solar wind that's going to be hitting us over the next couple days, and I wouldn't get super excited about it. It could definitely bring us some aurora at high latitudes, but you aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, it's probably not going to give you all that much, so you might want to sit this one out. The nice thing is that we do have old region 2740 and region 2741 that are going to be rotating into Earth view starting around the beginning of next week, and they could be still firing some solar storms so we could get some activity from them. Now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well you guys are kind of dealing with the spotless sun and kind of the low propagation that we have right now, but you are getting a little bit of boost from sporadic E, especially if you're in the northern hemisphere. So kind of hold on to that for dear life because again we have those regions that are going to be rotating into earth view starting around next week and that could boost the solar flux up and give you some decent radio propagation again. Now, as far as you GPS users are concerned, well, you know, a quiet sun is a good sun for you all. So enjoy, because your GPS reception should look pretty good all the way around. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.